Hey, what's up? Serena Apia here from thriftdiving.com and today we are going to do a really simple, easy project that I think you're gonna like. We are going to make DIY picture frames. We're just gonna make one and it's something that people have been asking me, hey, I wanna make picture frames. How do you make picture frames? I'm like, I don't know, I don't make picture frames. Well, today we're going to attempt it and the best part is that we are not using power tools, guys. I know, I know, right? Power tools is what I use, but we're gonna use a miter box and you're going to get to see how you can easily use this $8 tool to cut your wood. So stick with me because I'm gonna show you how to do it right now. So what a miter, miter box allows you to do is place your wood in here of course we want to try to clamp this down we don't want it moving and we can put our wood in here and we can make sure that it's nice and tight against the the miter box and we can either cut our wood at 90 degree angles like this or we can cut it at 45 degree angles watching my fingers of course we can cut it this way and we can also switch hands and cut it in this direction as well and this is how we're going to cut our picture frames if you go to home depot and buy this it is under ten dollars i believe it's only about eight or nine dollars you can get them on amazon and i will leave links below in the description so you can just click there and buy it if you'd like with my affiliate link but here's what's also really cool typically when you do picture frames you have to have a router in order to get this edge but they actually sell picture frame material at Home Depot. I couldn't believe it. I went there to buy wood and I thought I was going to have to, you know, break out the big power tools, but I don't have to. So this part here is already done for us. The only thing we have to do is cut 45 degree angles and then we can frame pretty much anything. You will need some wood glue. This is just standard wood glue. You'll need a couple of clamps. You'll need a stapler. We're using this arrow fastener stapler. Uh, probably one. Yeah, I don't think you'll need two. We're going to use one picture hanger thing on the back and you're going to need something to frame. This is a checklist that allows you to customize it so you can get all of the chores on here that your kids are responsible for. And if you want more checklists, you can visit checklist.coit.com. But this is the checklist that we are going to trim down. I printed it from their website and we are just going to trim this really quickly. So we trim out the date because we don't want that. So we can now make our own little customized frame. Okay. So to get started, what you didn't see is I had already trimmed this at a 45 degree angle on the picture frame. I took the saw that comes with it and I just cut it, putting it in the groove and then I just cut it. So that's going to be the top edge of the picture frame. So now I need to figure out how long this top part needs to be and if you look here on the back, the checklist will sit here with a piece of cardboard behind it, just like this. So I've already marked the line there. So when I put it back into the miter box, we can cut it so that that line is exactly where the blade goes through. So when you look closely, when I put the wood in the miter box and put it up against the edge, this red line here, I want it to be lined up right here. This is where the blade is going to cross through. And then we're ready to cut. So you see I've got the miter box clamped down to a table. Now the table is a little unsteady just because it's, you know, it's just kind of a wobbly craft table. So if you have a dining room table or a workbench, that's probably the best place to clamp this down. Now I'm going to put my wood in there, again, lining up that red line with the cut line. And I'm gonna use my saw to just saw it, making sure I keep my fingers out of the way. And I'm gonna try to hold the table still. Well, this is why you should have someone holding it because we did get a nice little piece broken off here. So we can just cut that off. All right, so there we have the top part of our picture frame. Now, clearly, if you have a miter saw, use that. It's going to be way easier than using the miter box. But for those of you who do not have power tools or who are intimidated to use them, this will work really, really well with this picture frame. We can also frame pictures. If you wanna put some glass in there, you can. So let's go ahead and finish cutting. All right, so we have the top, bottom, and side. Now we're gonna glue it, and we're gonna use our clamps to clamp it so that the glue has time to set.
And now we can test the piece of cardboard that we had cut from just a, a box that we had gotten in the mail. And the cardboard fits. And if we put our customizable checklist from Coit in there, we actually have a picture frame. Doo -doo -doo. So in order to get the cardboard to stay in the back, we're gonna use the Aero Fastener Stapler. So this project is done. So there you have it. That's how you make a picture frame with no power tools. Now I do have to say it's a little expensive to do it this way. We were able to get one picture frame plus we have enough wood to do a little picture frame and that long piece from Home Depot was like $12. So if you go to the thrift store and you're just looking for like a 4x6, 5x8, 8x10, by all means go thrifted. But if you have something that's kind of in a different shape, you know, like maybe very unique and you cannot find a picture frame in that shape, here is a way you can do it and you do not need power tools. I'm gonna to be using mine for my Coit checklist. The kids have been asking me for money to buy books and buy things. So with this checklist, they'll have their chores and they'll be able to earn their own money. So I'll take it down from here and I'll put it somewhere where they can actually see and they can mark off every day. And by the end of the week, they'll earn some allowances. And I'll probably, give them maybe just a few points for each one. I don't want to pay them too much. <laughs> anyway, if you enjoyed this project, give it a thumbs up. Be sure to go down below in the description, click on the link to go back to Coit's website so you can print your own customizable cleaning checklist for your kids or for yourself. And go back to thriftdiving.com, subscribe, because we always have new projects and you can get five freebies checklists just for subscribing. I will see you next video.